When playing as Gridlock, you become an ideal candidate for taking the Diffuser. Not only do Gridlock's tracks sting as obscure noise as you're planting, Gridlock also gets smokes to cut off defenders' lines of sight. Using the two together, Gridlock is able to deny the defenders any real idea of when or where the plant is going down. Just make sure you have some of your teammates with you in case the defenders try and throw C4 or push through the tracks for you. The best thing about Nomad is the ability to throw defenders into claymores. This has got to be the funniest and at the same time the most satisfying way of killing somebody in all of Siege. Just make sure that the claymore isn't within the air jabs area of effect and set it all up outside a popular runout or along a popular rotation slash flanking route. Maverick also has a claymore trick that he can use. This can be really handy against mirrors if they don't know what's going on. But all you have to do is place your claymore next to a wall. It doesn't matter if it's been reinforced or not, but then burn a small hole where the laser is pointing. Be careful not to destroy the claymore whilst you're doing this, and anyone standing on the other side of the wall is going to get blown up. Finker's tip is really simple. The animation for Finker's boost is super easy to cancel. As soon as you hit the gadget button, you can either aim down sights or start sprinting, and you basically cancel the animation straight away, saving yourself precious seconds. Lion is super useful to buy yourself free time when you're covering a plant. Obviously with the rework that's coming up, you're going to have less time than we do at the moment, but you're still essentially buying free time where the defenders aren't going to move to contest you whilst you get the diffuser down. With the recent changes to Dockerby, if you know for a fact that the enemy has a mute on their team, save your logic bombs. Communicate with your Thatcher, IQ, Twitch, whoever, and only start using the logic bombs once a couple of the mute jammers have already been destroyed. Mute is now a massive counter to Dockerby, and it's super easy for anyone on the defending team to stop the phones from calling if there's a mute jammer nearby. It's pretty easy to set up two candelas to go off at the same time. Hold one for the maximum amount of time and then plant it on a wall, and then hold the other for the least amount of time and throw it to the back of the room. The two should go off at roughly the same time, and this is going to blind anyone near the wall on your side, as well as anyone on the other side of the room. And if there was only one person in the room, it'll be a lot more difficult for them to get out of the way the flashes in time. For Zephyr, we're going to look at a little trick using vertical play. There might be a couple of occasions where there are defenders sitting on hatches above you, and in these situations it is super easy to put a claymore beneath the hatch and destroy the hatch causing them to fall through to their death. Not only is this really effective if you get it right, it is really satisfying. Something I see a lot of Jackal players do is to find some footprints and basically ping the person straight away. If the footprints are starting to go cold, this is fine because it means that the person is probably quite far away and a member of your team might be able to get them. If the footprints are still quite warm, you're basically giving away the fact that you are there and you're causing them to run away from you, which means you're not as likely to get the kill. If you can hold off on the scan, follow the footprints and figure out roughly where the defender is, you can coordinate with your team and have a really good chance of getting an early kill. The other bonus is that later on in the round you're still going to have all three uses of the Inox to actually ping people. With her banner, it's possible to create a hole that you can just walk through at crouching height using only one set of pellets. This is just something that you have to kind of practice and get used to, but after practicing a couple of times you should have it down and be able to do it on basically any wall, saving yourself valuable pellets. Now there was a tip going around a little while ago where Capitao would fire a single bullet hole and then drop an asphyxiating bolt through it. This is super useful and super handy, but one extra little useful thing you can do is throw a silencer on your pistol and use the pistol to make the hole. In the example on screen, the terrorists basically just react to suppressed weapons, but in multiplayer with everything going on and the defenders focusing on your teammates, there's a good chance that they're not going to notice a suppressed pistol shot come by. With Blackbeard, I do understand why some people will will keep one shield on until it breaks and then swap to their second shield. You want to get as much use out of that first shield as possible before you change. However, if the shield health is really low, you should definitely consider dropping back really quickly and just changing the shield over. If you're up against a gun that has a fast rate of fire, it doesn't really matter. You need to have as much health on that shield as possible, or else the first shield is just going to smash, you'll get headshot, and you'll never have been able to use the second shield in the first place. Where possible, always use the shield with the most amount of health. Plenty of book players do this, but even more of them don't. Don't be afraid to use his shotgun in close quarter combat. The skeleton key is really effective at opening up people as well as holes in walls. And it could be a better alternative to aiming down sights with an ACOG when there's a defender two or three meters away. There's not a lot of tips I can really think of for IQ, so if you've got any, please leave them in the comments. But what we have is basically be vigilant for pulse and vigil. 
because IQ can obviously see their gadgets moving around whilst they're using them. With Pulse, keep in mind that you actually have more range than he does. He can only see people 9 meters away from him, so use this to your advantage and keep him 10 or meters away from you and he won't be able to counter you. Blitz excels when you're close to people. When you start to get close to defenders, you need to be responding to their height. If they're crouching, crouch, and this will block as much of you as possible. And when they're standing, stand up. The main reason for this is that once you're close enough, they can just shoot over the top of your shield, and they can even melee over the top of your shield. If you want to be a little bit sneaky with Fuse, you can use one of his cluster charges to mask the sound of a breach charge. It'll also clear anyone out the immediate vicinity if you're going to go for a hot breach. This is really effective if you fuse a left hand window and hot breach a window to its right. The first couple of clusters will explode and clear any defenders or gadgets out of the way. The third or fourth cluster should mask the sound of your breach charge so that defenders don't necessarily know that you're swinging in and at this point the clusters that are on your side of the room shouldn't be a problem for you you should be safe whilst the last couple are exploding with Glaz, I think people really need to learn to use his pistols. It is possible to use his rifle effectively at close ranges, but a lot of people aren't well practiced at it. If you're in a clutch situation, or you're being forced to fight at close quarters, get one of those pistols out, and there's a good chance that you'll do a lot better. Unlike Blitz's gadget, Monty's gadget doesn't really assist him in fighting, and what this means is that as soon as you aim down sights, people are probably going to headshot you. The problem is that hip firing doesn't always guarantee good results either. With Monty, you want to learn to drop his shield and then melee. If you can get the timing right on this, you can really catch defenders out, but this might take a bit of practice because you can't do it instantly, and if you miss your opportunity, they're gonna melee you first. Now that Mozzie's out getting drones left, right, and center, if you're playing Twitch, send a normal drone in front of you. What this basically does is safeguard Twitch from any pests. The pest will jump for the drone that's in front of you, and then as Twitch, you can shoot that drone. This basically denies Mozzie one of his drones straight away, whilst also making sure that he doesn't get a shock drone to use against your team. If you're playing Thermite, there's one really useful thing you can do. Wait in spawn. Don't do anything for the first half a minute, for the first minute, for the first two minutes. It honestly doesn't matter. If you can drone your team into the building so that they have control of most of the building before you push for sight, you are going to give yourself the best chances possible of not getting spawn peaked of not dying whilst you're placing your exothermic charge down and opening the wall that you really need to open. Ash's tip is very similar to Zephyr's. This one can be a lot of fun. We can use it the same way we already talked about with Zephyr, but Zephyr's impacts detonate instantly, where Ash's breaching round takes a couple of seconds and makes a loud noise. If you shoot the underside of popular anchor spots and then swap to your gun straight away, you can do a good amount of damage to whoever's sitting there and then hopefully pick up a kill before they manage to run off. As Thatcher, if you're working with a thermite to get an external wall open, you should be shooting the wall that you're opening whilst the exothermic charge is going down. This is going to make it much harder for any bandit who is bandit tricking to hear which wall the thermite is actually going down on, and that is super useful when you're trying to get the wall open. And the final tip is for Sledge. Vaulting is kind of inconsistent in Siege, there's a lot of different variables. There's the height of the thing that you're vaulting, how far away you are from it, whether you're crouching or standing, whether it's a smooth or jagged hole, and sometimes if you knock a hole in a wall and then try and vault it, you can get stuck for a couple of seconds, and in those seconds, it is entirely possible that someone is just going to shoot you. This is a super basic thing and most people will be doing it already, but just crouch when you're making the hole a sledge. If you swing the hammer whilst you're crouching, you're not going to have these vaulting issues. And you're also not even going to have to stop moving, you just push through the debris and into the room. And that is one tip for every attacker currently in Rainbow Six Siege. Really hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful. Be sure to leave a like if you did, and if you didn't, leave a dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you're not already, feel free to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.